Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And this video is episode number seven in a series of videos where we are showing you step-by-step step from the ground up, how we're upfitting our brand new Ford Transit into a DIY camper van. Now in the last video, we uninstalled the headliner and headliner shelf in our Transit to access the bare metal behind it to install insulation and sound dampening. Now this week, we're waiting on some parts. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to show you what tools we're going to be using in our upcoming electrical videos. So let's get started. So these Klein 63030 coaxial cutters are pretty much the most versatile wire cutters that I have. They are small enough that they aren't too cumbersome to use on small wires, but the hex cutting head is sharp enough to cut the big 4 aught wires that we use for bigger inverters. Now these have actually completely replaced my 9-inch cable cutters um, that I've shown in other videos and have completely replaced my 16-inch cable cutters for handheld use. Uh, I showed both of those in a previous episode teaching how to cut wire. These Klein coaxial cutters are cheaper than their 16 inch counterparts and can be used for smaller wires without being too overkill. Now I would classify these as a necessity. Now I also keep a set of eight inch diagonal cutters in my tool belt as well because they are a little easier and faster to use than the coaxial cutters on smaller wires. The coaxial cutters, they need to be opened uh, a little bit wider than the diagonal cutters to accept the wire, which isn't a huge deal, but it does get a little harder on your hands after repeated use with these for small wires. So I would actually also classify these as a necessity. And I also keep these flush trim cutters uh, in my tool belt for really small wires, like 16 gauge and smaller. These open with the help of a spring, and they're also great for zip ties. And I would classify these as nice to have. So those are all of the wire cutters that I use regularly. Now of those three, I would say that the coaxial cutters are the most versatile, followed by the eight inch diagonal cutters, and lastly, the small flush trim cutters. So if you only have room in your tool budget for one of them, the Klein 63030 one inch coaxial cutters are the winners in my book. Now that we've got the wires cut, it's time to talk about wire strippers. So to put a wire lug or a ferrule on the end of the wire, we need to be able to strip back the insulation to expose the bare copper. Now here are the various wire strippers that I use for various sizes of wire. So starting with wires smaller than 10 gauge, I'm always reaching for these self-adjusting wire strippers. Now I'd consider these a must have. They're simply the fastest and easiest and most beginner friendly way to strip wires smaller than 10 gauge in my opinion. And I would classify these as a necessity. Now for wires larger than 10 gauge, I've got a few other options. So these Klein wire strippers can strip wires from size 12 gauge to size six gauge, but I really only use them for six gauge because these do most of the other work. So they're a bit of a one trick pony, but they are super useful for six gauge as it's a bit of an awkward size to strip by using the other tools that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. And I would classify these as a nice to have tool. So for four gauge and larger, I've got two options here. First is the Jokari cable knife. It has a tiny little blade inside that cuts the wire insulation as you spin the knife around the wire. And the knob on the back lets you control the depth of the blade. Now, once the cut is made around the wire, uh, I can just take the cable knife and slide it up the wire to cut the insulation and then pull the insulation right off the wire. Now these are super user friendly and I would classify these as nice to have because the Klein 63030 coaxial cutters I just showed you are also great for stripping wire. Now this is a bit less user friendly, but with a bit of practice, it works pretty well. These cutters are sharp enough that I can just open them up, put them around the wire, lightly close them, and then spin them around the wire until the insulation is cut, and then just pull the insulation off of the copper. I actually find myself using this method uh, more than I do with the cable knife most of the time, but they're both pretty good tools, and I would classify these as a necessity. And that is all of the wire strippers. So let's talk about wire crimpers. 
So for insulated ring terminals, insulated spade connectors, and insulated butt splice connectors, smaller than 10 gauge, I've got these ratcheting crimpers with a flat jaw on them so the insulation doesn't get damaged. Now there are three different jaws on these crimpers depending on the size of the terminal that is being crimped. And I would classify these as a necessity. So for PV connectors like MC4 connectors or open barrel splices, I use these ratcheting crimpers. They are pretty much the same as the last crimpers, but the jaws have a little uh, tooth in them, um, in the middle of them, and it folds the terminal over on itself for a nice secure crimp. And I would classify these as a necessity as well. So for wire lugs bigger than 10 gauge, all the way up to 4 aught, we have to bust out the big guns and get this monstrosity right here. Now this crimper has an adjustable punch in it that can accommodate wire lugs from 8 gauge all the way up to bigger than 4 aught. The lug goes on the wire, and the wire goes in the crimper, and then I'll squish the handle down which drives the punch into the lug, crimping the wire in place. Now there are several other types of crimpers out there, uh, but the ones I'm showing you, or the ones similar to it, are the ones that I've seen work the best with the most consistent results. Now this crimper is pretty expensive, but these are big wires flowing big amperages. So for the sake of doing it right the first time, so you don't have to do it again, this is a necessity. Now I have three different types of ferrule crimpers that I use. Um, this one, it, it'll crimp square ferrules onto wires smaller than six gauge for things like smaller Victron smart solar charge controllers, and then this one makes hex ferrules on wires smaller than six gauge for things like DC distribution panels or Victron MultiPlus inverter chargers. And then lastly, this one crimps square-ish ferrules on wires from six gauge to two gauge for things like larger Victron smart solar charge controllers. <laughs> Why did it fall out? And it's broken. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we'll figure that out later. <laughs> now, ferrules are made to make your life easier, your workmanship better, and your install more professional. So since you can technically do an install without ferrules, I have to classify these as just nice to have, but it's a necessity if you're trying to achieve professional results. Now, for some miscellaneous items, a heat gun. Now we put adhesive line heat shrink on all of our wire lugs and the best way to shrink this adhesive line heat shrink and make the glue sticky is to use a heat gun. Now my cheap heat gun that I've been using for the last two or three years, it uh, broke last week. So took this chance to upgrade to something a little nicer and got this DeWalt battery powered heat gun. It has two heat settings on the back of it and the lack of power cord is pretty nice. A heat gun is a necessity, but if you're trying to pinch some pennies, this one's kind of expensive. But most of the inexpensive heat guns on Amazon will work just fine for what we're asking them to do. But once I break the inexpensive version of a tool, I usually like to upgrade to a higher quality version for Mark II, uh, since it's pretty clear that I actually use it. Now, next up is a digital multimeter. Now, most will work fine for just checking voltage, which is what we're primarily using this for in these systems. Uh, now, this is a necessity for troubleshooting, as well as double checking the polarity of various wires and components in the system. Now, I also carry an AC voltage detector. Now, this simply lets me know if a wire has 120 volts or 240 volts coming to it or not, so I can be sure to not touch it and shock myself. <laughs> it's a proximity sensor, so I can just hold it next to the wire, and the detector will use demon magic to tell me if the wire will shock me if I touch it or not. So I would consider this nice to have, but it's pretty inexpensive, and getting shocked is not fun, so maybe consider it um, a necessity as well. Lastly is just standard hand tools. So if you're going to tackle a DIY camper electrical project, you'll just need a full set of ratchets, sockets, screwdrivers, wrenches, a drill, an impact driver, and all the other more normal things that you would need for any household DIY project. And that's all I've got. These are the tools that I use and will get you well on your way in your DIY camper electrical install. 
Now, if you're watching this and you use different tools, let me know in the comment section below what you like to use and what purpose you use it for. Now, in next week's video, we are going to see if we can quiet down the interior of this van by spraying some lizard skin sound control. So stay tuned. Now, we hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it would be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. And if this video inspired you to build something, be sure to tag your projects with the Explore Us Live tag on Instagram so that we can see and share your projects. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.